medieval house, the kind that some people call haunted, is like an undiscovered country waiting to be explored. Hill House has stood for 90 years, and might stand for 90 more. Silence lay steadily against the wood and stone of Hill House, and whatever walked there, walked alone. Hi, I'm Bobby, and welcome to Hill House. While I love all horror movies, the ones that scare me the most are slow burn ones, where the atmosphere slowly builds, and it's more about what's going on beneath the surface than actual on-screen violence. So let's take a look at one of the most classic slow burn horror movies, the 1963 adaptation of Shirley Jackson's classic book, The Haunting. Shirley Jackson was a New England writer, housewife, and a bit of a recluse. And one day she was riding a train into New York. And out of the corner of her eye, she saw this burnt out abandoned apartment building. And just immediately felt that there was something inherently evil about it. And that inspired her to write the haunted house novel, The Haunting of Hill House. Searching for inspiration, she looked at local abandoned houses and at houses that her great-grandfather, who was an architect, built. Ultimately, the three houses that influenced her the most were Jennings Hall at Beddington College in Vermont, the Everett Mansion in Vermont, which is supposedly haunted, and finally, the Winchester Mystery House in California, which is located near the town that she grew up in. This house was built for the widow of the heir of the Winchester Rifle Company, and she was concerned about the ghosts of the people that her husband's guns killed. So after consulting a psychic, she built a house that would be confusing for ghosts, with narrow hallways and staircases that lead to nowhere. The director, Robert Wise, saw a review for the book in Time Magazine and bought a copy. It was reading in his office when his writer friend, Nelson Giddings, who eventually wrote this movie, came in right in the middle of one of the scary parts. And Robert Wise was so startled that he went Rah! and jumped out of his chair. And he thought if a book could do that, this should make a fine picture. Also, while Robert Wise was now winning Oscars for his movie West Side Story, he actually got his start directing horror movies for the low-budget horror producer Val Luton. Now Val was really the innovator of psychological horror and was always saying, the greatest fear is the fear of the unknown, and if you make the screen dark enough, the mind's eye will read anything into it you want. With The Haunting, Robert Wise could use everything that he learned from Val Luton, but now he had more experience and a bigger budget. Dr. John Markway wants to investigate the supposedly haunted mansion, Hill House. He has selected Eleanor Lance, a.k.a. Nell, and Theodora, a.k.a. Theo, to join him. They are also joined by Luke Sanderson, who is going to inherit Hill House. Through several incidents, Dr. Markway's hypothesis is proven correct. Hill House is indeed haunted, but it is far more dangerous than he ever imagined, because the house wants Eleanor. What I love about The Haunting is the tone, and how it starts off being clever, funny, and spooky, kind of like me, but then slowly evolves into something TERRIFYING. By 1963, audiences have seen plenty of haunted house movies, both scary ones like The Uninvited, and funny ones like with The Three Stooges, and they soignantly knew what to expect. The Haunting is aware of that, it meets those expectations, but also subverts them. Just as we'd hoped for, Hill House is creepy looking inside and out. For the exterior shots, they used the supposedly haunted Edinburgh Park Hotel, and Wise used infrared film to make it look even more frightening. In the opening, Dr. Markway narrates the history of Hill House, with all its murders, mysteries, and suicides. But Dr. Markway is so excited about it, you can't help but smile. There are creepy sounds and characters get lost. But they also make jokes about it, like, you haven't the ghost of a chance. And of course, there's the frightened caretaker, Mrs. Dudley, who gives an overly ominous warning about Hill House. 
I don't stay after I set out the dinner. Not after it begins to get dark. I leave before the dark comes. We live over in town, miles away, so there won't be anyone around if you need help. We couldn't hear you in the night. No one could. No one lives any nearer than town. No one will come any nearer than that. In the night. In the dark. She gives this speech twice, but the second time no one listens to her. Because this is a slow burn, this off-kilter humor gives you something to hang on to while nothing much is happening. The movie Rosemary's Baby will later do something similar. And it fits the story, because these characters think they're smarter than some haunted house. But they soon discover that the house is smarter than they are. After the first Things Go Bump in the Night sequence, <laughs> Dr. Markway suggests that the house is trying to separate them, and it does, both psychologically by making them turn on each other, and physically, like when Eleanor goes to sleep next to Theo, but wakes up on the other end of the room. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> hand was I holding? Because it pulls you in slowly, you believe everything. And as the house gets more and more control, it gets scarier and scarier. Near the end, when they totally got you, they do some special effects, they have a really great jump scare, but for me, the eeriest moment is when they repeat the opening narration. But instead of the enthusiastic yet clinical Dr. Markway speaking, you hear the voice of the new ghost of Hill House. But who might that be? You'll find out when we talk about the characters. A slow burn horror movie absolutely needs great characters, and I would watch this fabulous foursome even if there wasn't a haunted house. And the main one is Eleanor Lance, is played by Julie Harris. Now one of Hill House's past victims was a paid companion who took care of the elderly Abigail Crane. Now this parallels Eleanor's own past, because for the past 11 years, she had to take care of her sick and mean old lady mother. And it's implied that for this reason, Hill House wants Eleanor. When Eleanor was a child, she had a poltergeist experience. And you get the impression that because of that, her mother just shielded her from the world. She's like a child in a woman's body. She daydreams. She doesn't drink. And we drink in 1963. And she's emotionally unstable. In fact, when the screenwriter Nelson Giddings was reading the book, he thought that there actually weren't any ghosts, and it was all about her having a mental breakdown. And he asked Shirley Jackson if that was her intention. And she said no, but that's a good idea. So they kept the ghosts, but they also included those mental breakdown elements into the story. Next, there's the debonair Richard Johnson as Dr. John Markway. Because paranormal psychology wasn't a major yet, he got his degree in anthropology because he felt it was the closest thing. He's classy, intelligent, and can't wait to find out about the unknown. Psychic phenomena is subject to certain laws. And just what are these laws? Or you won't know until you break them. Unfortunately, his enthusiasm puts the group, especially Eleanor, at risk. Next, there's Claire Bloom as the blunt lesbian beatnik, Theo. You weren't sorry when your mother died, so I won't say I'm sorry now. Theo has ESP and is able to tell what the house is thinking and knows right away that the house wants Eleanor. Now they never say the word lesbian, but it's clear that she's living with her girlfriend. She has a bit of a crush on Eleanor, but is also protective of her. However, as the house takes control, she is also the first one to turn on her. The final member of the group is Rust Hamblin, 
who previously appeared in Robert Weiss's West Side Story, is Luke Sander. Luke is going to inherit Hill House. According to him, he majored in Martinis at college, doesn't believe in ghosts, and thinks this whole thing is one big joke. This is a cold spot, a genuine cold spot. I guarantee it won't register on any thermometer. Just the place to chill our beer, huh? He has the least amount of depth of the four main characters, but his humor really rounds out the group. Now, along with the living characters, we must also talk about the ghosts. In The Haunting, they don't actually show any ghosts. Instead, they go the more creative and I think spookier route by just suggesting their presence. Behind walls, you hear banging, laughing, and unintelligible speaking. There are drafts where there shouldn't be, and they make the leaves on the plants move about as if the ghosts are trying to touch the characters. And you see doors trying to open, but you don't see what's on the other side. And my favorite thing is the house is filled with these statues and weird decorations that all have faces, and I get the impression that they are representing the ghosts of Hill House. They're positioned, so it looks like they're staring at the characters. And Theo does remark that the house is watching them. This one could be a tortured soul of Hill House. This one could be an evil spirit. And the characters even state that these ones could represent the Crane family, whom originally owned the house. In the 1999 remake, they actually CGI these statues to move. But I think the mere suggestion is so much scarier. <laughs> When you go to a supposedly haunted place, you usually don't see ghosts running around. Instead, you see relatively normal things, but get eerie feelings from them. And The Haunting totally captures that experience. The Haunting novel and movie are now considered horror classics. The movie was remade in 1999, but many felt that it overused CGI. And it is currently being remade again with a new Netflix TV series, The Haunting of Hill House. The Haunting also inspired other works, like Richard Matheson's Hell House and Stephen King's Rose Red. As for the homes that helped inspire Hill House, the Everett Mansion has been featured on Sci-Fi's Ghost Hunters, and in California, you can go on tours of the Winchester Mystery House, and it is even the basis of a new movie. Some people don't like slow burn horror movies because they think they're boring, but I love them. And The Haunting is the perfect example of how to make one. So I give it four spirits out of four. So thank you for watching Dusty Old Movies and enjoy your stay at Hill House.